Welcome to the Bill Hansen and Gypsy Williams Show. Where we help you turn your wedding dreams of sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. And we help you turn those into lifetime experiences that are going to create oohs and ahs from your clients. Bill Hansen has catered over 10,000 weddings starting back in the 1960s and while he is 74 years young, he is not retired, y'all. He is refired. <laughs> his South Florida weddings at Villa Woodbine, the Sky Museum and Gardens, during his stays at over 500 other venues are sought after by those with very distinctive tastes. And Gypsy, with her brand of sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, she's seen it all. She's seen the good, she's seen the not so good, she's seen the bad, and she's seen the ugly. So she knows what's going to work for your wedding, and she also knows what won't work. <laughs> Today, we're going to share with you some secrets on how to select that perfect wedding gown to meet your style and your budget. And the one thing that everybody needs to know, that is every bride needs to know about choosing the bride dress. Our guest today is Miss Rita Benares. I hope I said that right. Couture bridal fashion designer, hey, Rina Ravini. Uh, and she knows all the details on selecting that perfect wedding gown. It's truly an honor to see you again, Miss Rita. We've done a lot of uh, runway bridal shows in New York, and it's great to see you again. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome, Thank Rita. You. We haven't met before, but I have a question for you. Somehow you got started in the world of economics, from what I understand. And now you're in the fashion wedding dress business. Can you give us a quick rundown of your story? Correct. Yes. Thank you, Bill and Gypsy, for having me on your show today. Um, it's a really interesting story, honestly, how I went from economics to fashion. Um, I was both a math and an artsy person. So after graduating from high school, I really wanted to go into engineering. And um, my parents being old school were like, well, no, engineering is for boys. So do something else. And then I wanted to do fashion. And then they said to me, no, there's, you can't make any money in fashion. My mother was a seamstress. So they were like, no, you can't go into fashion. You're not gonna become a seamstress. That's what your mother did. You need to go to university and do something. So my dad suggested that I study business and economics because that would be a great foundation if I ever wanted to do a fashion business or go into fashion. So that's how I started from, in economics. And then afterwards, um, I was quite bored with economics to be truthfully honest and decided right after I finished that that I would go straight into design school and um, did a design degree and then started uh, working in the fashion industry. Wow, that's amazing. That's a great story. That is, that is. But, but as you mentioned, your mom was a seamstress and all, so obviously that inspired you as a child, growing up and being around fabrics and all. So then how did you start getting your inspiration and still have inspiration every year for a spring collection, a fall collection? Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, my inspiration really comes from everything that goes on in life and in the world. Um, a lot of it comes through my travel, um, the experiences that I share with my family, my children. And it, there's, you know, it, honestly, in every corner of the world that you look at, there is something that can inspire you. So it's really difficult to sort of pinpoint exactly where it comes from. It really does come from all of life and the experiences that I have on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So Rita, question for you. Um, let's talk a little bit about fabrics. How do you select the fabrics that you incorporate into your gowns? And also, are there some fabrics that are more suitable for certain types of, of gowns and dresses? Of course. Um, fabric selection is always fun. I mean, every season all the mills um, create new fabrications that they show us. And um, through that, there's always the editing process of like, because you, know, you go into it with an idea of what you want and you're hoping that you will find the fabric that you're looking for. Um, most of the times you do find exactly what you're looking for. So it all starts from, you know, looking at what silhouettes I want to design for the season. Typically I'll spread out my silhouettes and say, you know, I want to create these ball gowns made out of this type of fabric, these fit and flares out of this fabric, these soft silhouettes out of such and such fabric. And then it's about going and finding them through 
my different mills that I work with. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, every fabric has a different hand and a different fall, so it's suitable for different silhouettes. So when you're designing a ball gown, for instance, you know you can do it in so many different ways. It's all a matter of what you choose for what I choose for that season. So. You know, there's seasons that, you know, I want to do really structured ball gowns. And then in that case, I'd be using a more structured fabrication. And of course, I take into consideration the hand and the fall of it in order so that it's suitable for a ball gown. And that's basically how I go through every single silhouette and fabric that I want to select, you know. And every season, you know, is dependent on what my inspiration and my theme is. So whether it's like a, a light and airy season or a more architectural structured season so it's it's a it's kind of like working putting like a puzzle together you know you know what you want and you need to find it and then you need to find one that works for that specific silhouette it's actually a lot of fun mm -hmm. and and i see it with i mean from seeing all your collections how beautifully every fabric matches that style and all and and a little later in the show we're going to talk about the body types how all women body types and finding the right dress but one question that brides always ask is, I just got engaged, my wedding's another year and a half or a year or whatever. What's the timetable realistically to order a gown to go to a bridal salon, get fitted, find that right gown? Can she find something in six months and have it delivered for, for her time for her wedding? Or what do you see as a timeline? My suggestion for brides when they're looking for the dress and they want to order is to give yourself nine months. Because what nine months does for you is it gives you six months for that dress to get delivered from the designer to the store um, without having to incur any rush fees. And then you've got three months that the store can focus on your alterations. Now, of course, you could do it in a shorter period of time. However, then it does put a lot of stress on everybody because you're going to have to incur a rush charge. The store is going to have to like really rush through your alterations. So really, nine months is a really nice, comfortable time period to give yourself. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense because no one, part of the whole part of our show is that what we're trying to do is help couples not stress out so much uh, with their wedding because quite frankly, you know, the engagement happens and everybody's excited and then they start looking at every little element that they have to deal with and it obviously it becomes very, very, very stressful. So the more they can do in advance, the better off they will be. So that is great advice. You should hang your hat on that one, Rita. That's great. Question for you. Uh, down here in South Florida, we have a wonderful venue called Villa Woodbine. It's an outdoor event with some indoor space. So during the shoulder seasons, it starts to get a little hot, you know, come March, April, and October, late September, October. So are there certain types of fabrics that work well, not only in the heat, but also in the humidity? Um, I would suggest if you're doing an outdoor wedding in the heat that you want to keep it light and airy. You want to look for synthetic fabrications if you're thinking of a more solid fabric. So if you're looking for a crepe, which would be a nice soft fabrication, you'd want it to have a little bit of a, a natural composition to it. So whether it be like a viscose or a silk, um, that would be perfect. And then there's always such a great array of organzas out there that are incorporated in tools to give you like 3D dimension in laces. So mm -hmm. that would be a perfect thing because with a with a tool that's got like an application of 3D flowers made out of organzas, it's gonna be light, it's gonna be airy, it's not gonna wrinkle, it's gonna hold the shape really nicely. And even if you know you feel a little bit warm, it's not gonna show anything. So that would be my suggestion for a hot, humid climate. Thank you, that's a great answer. So let me ask this, we, I mentioned something about body types. So um, there's so many body types out there and um, how, do you feel like the body types, are, is there a style or one style that can fit all body types or, or does it all just depend on each type and what style is going to work with the bride? How do you come up with that? Is there, are there any limits at all? Um, when you're looking for a dress, I think most women have a sense of like what type of 
silhouettes work for them as far as like necklines and shapes for the upper body. So I would really focus on that when you're starting your look, your search, and then definitely try on different silhouettes so that you can see as far as like the bottom, whether you feel good in like a ball gown or in a fit and flare or an A-line, or if you want something that's like a little bit slimmer. Um, the one important thing is that when you put it on, you want to have something that's going to sort of like cinch in your waist a little bit and accentuate that so that you don't look sort of like linear and just like more up and down straight. So that's really a key thing. And then you really want to make sure that, you know, you're accentuating, especially on your upper body, you know, whether it be like your neckline, if you feel like you've got like the great collarbones and shoulders, you want to accentuate that. So those would be the key elements that I'd be looking for when, you know, buying a dress or trying on dresses. And definitely when you put it on, you will definitely know that it's your dress because you're you're gonna feel great in it. It's just like when you put on like your favorite pair of jeans that you know that you know that you look slim in and that you look fabulous in. You're gonna get that exact same feeling when you put on the correct wedding dress for your body type. Rita, you've seen the history and the evolution of bridal dresses from when you started all the way up to today. I think what might be on the minds of many of the couples that are watching this right now is what's going on what do you see in 2021 and even to 2022 and considering what's going on too with the covid and the other uh trend towards smaller weddings what what would you tell our couples um, given our current situation with COVID, um, a lot of people are sort of, you know, having time to sit and reflect and, you know, think about their lives in general. I think a lot of people are now taking this time to sort of, you know, declutter their whole life and way of being and be a little bit more focused. So that's going to translate into the fashion trend. So what you're going to be seeing is you'll be seeing a lot more simplified silhouettes, cleaner silhouettes. Um, we're going to go back to simplicity. Um, and a lot of people are going to be navigating towards that for their weddings. It's going to, you know, follow through right into the wedding trend. So it'll be, you know, simpler silhouettes, not per se smaller silhouettes, um, but simpler because, you know, still there are the women out there that want to have that gorgeous ball gown, but the silhouettes are going to be the overall styling, I should say, is going to be mm -hmm. a lot simpler and cleaner in sensibility, less fussy and frivolous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and you see that through history when you see, the way the gowns during you know, economic periods and what have you, I don't know, and I know you would know, like the time of the Grace Kelly and then later on with the Jacqueline Onassis and then that more refined lines and all. And, I, and that all, again, is the economics and whatever kind of influence that, and I believe was in the 1950s and whatever, and in the 60s, they even had the shorter dresses and all. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you know, this, um, if you had one piece of advice to offer to a bride out there before she walks into a salon or starts looking through magazines and what have you, what advice would you give her in finding that perfect wedding? You know me, I like to interrupt. I don't think Rita was even around no, during Jackie or Nassa, Sarah. So, <laughs> um, I'm saying in history, y'all read. She's, she's a fashion <laughs> lady. She would have looked at all that up already years ago. Right, Rita? You already said <laughs> <that. laughs> all of the fashion oh. history and know yeah. all the different eras and stuff. So, you know, it's yeah. all good. I, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> you read about it, but you didn't live through it. Okay, that's I did not, Bill. <laughs> so what advice would you give a bride before she walks into a bridal salon, as she starts looking through magazines and websites? What's the one piece of advice you would give her? We all have a sense of what we want to look like, and we understand our personal stuff. So when you go to the wedding salon, you don't want to be overwhelmed with all the different silhouettes that are out there, because there's thousands and thousands of wedding dresses out there. And I would stick true to what your personal style is and try on those dresses that reflect who you are. That way you're gonna be falling in love with the dress that suits you. And definitely once you get into the store and you're trying on dresses, you will know which is the right one for you. If you have to ask others, what do you think of this? It's probably not the right one for you. When you put it on, you're gonna fall in love in the exact same way that you fell in love with your fiance. Yeah. You read my mind because so many times, you know, they show that. I mean, what do you think, mom? What do you think, dad? 
And really, it has to be what you think. What because because it's the bride's special day. It's it you know, and the bride uh, needs to be totally comfortable in her dress. So, absolutely, Rita. That's about all the time we have today. And I know you're a very busy lady. And Gypsy and I have other things on our plate today. But I wanted to really, really, really thank you for uh, sharing a few precious moments with us. And I I I'm sure that those people that have been watching this will walk away with a much better idea as to how they can go about selecting their their wedding gown. So uh, next week, Gypsy and I will be back with another spectacular guest. If you want to reach Rita, we're going to put it up on the screen, but I have it at Rita Veneris. Uh, dot com r i t a v i n e r i s dot com. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Rita. Uh, for those thank of you all. that have watched this, um, please, if you liked it, we this is new for us. This is not something that Gypsy and I have been doing for years. So if you liked it, please, 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 click it, the like button. And if you Hit like, 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 okay? <laughs> yeah, like, 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 share, 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 yeah, share, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> so, thank you, Rita. We appreciate it. I look forward to meeting you in person one day. And, and may God bless you and your family and your friends. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Gypsy. And everyone stay safe.